Let me start with uh, axing the tax. Of course, your members are disproportionately harmed by the carbon tax and related policies because they have to drive trucks. It's not possible to, especially in rural and remote communities, and I know you, rep you represent many of those communities, those folks who drive trucks in order to take their tools to job sites pay a disproportionately high price for the carbon tax. They are among the 60 percent of Canadian families who pay more in taxes than they get back in rebates. And then their employers have to pay that tax, which forces them to reduce wages and pass on the losses to their wage-earning workers. By a common-sense conservative government, will ax the tax to lower the cost of gas, heat, and groceries and ensure that the purchasing power of the working people is enhanced. Further to that point, we will fix the budget. The inflationary spending I described is the result, is actually, all the inflation I just described is actually only the symptom. The disease is overspending. Government spending drives deficits, taxes, and inflationary money printing. We're going to use a common sense principle that your members and your union halls use every single day to run your finances. It's called the dollar for dollar rule. My government will legislate a rule that every time we bring in one new dollar of spending, we must find a dollar of savings to pay for it. That will require we go into our bureaucratic departments and root out waste and mismanagement to optimize use of money. If we want to spend more here, we have to spend less there, or we have to get a bargain here and there. That's how seniors, single moms, and small businesses run their finances. It's how I will run my government. We will obviously get rid of waste like the $35 billion infrastructure bank that doesn't complete infrastructure projects, the $60 million Arrive Can app the billion-dollar so-called Green Fund, 15 uh, percent of which has already been known to be misappropriated. We'll cut back on foreign aid to dictators, terrorists, and multinational bureaucracies and bring that money home to put it into funding our military. We will optimize the use of our dollars so that we can balance the budget and the money printing and bring down inflation and interest rates. In addition to fixing the budget, we're going to build the homes. You're the ones who will actually build the homes, actually, the truth be told. But we're the ones that need to get out of the way to let you do it. Canada, as I said at the outset, has the fewest homes per capita of any country in the G7, even though we have the most land to build on. We spend 9 percent of our GDP on residential construction, which is twice the OECD average, twice what they spend in the States. We have the most mortgage debt per, as a share of GDP. So, and we have by far the most land and lumber per capita. So how is it that we have the fewest homes? The answer is that we have the absolute worst bureaucracy. We have the second slowest building permits in the OECD. This might seem like a nuisance. It's not a nuisance. It is a massive cost. C.D. Howe calculates that in Vancouver, the cost of permits, that is to include the charges, the fees, the delays, the rezoning, the consultants, the lawyers, adds up to $1.3 million for every newly built home. In, in Toronto, it's $350,000. The GTA municipalities have hiked their development charges 900 percent. Winnipeg blocked 2,000 homes next to a transit station built for those homes. Montreal has blocked 25,000 homes in the last seven years, according to the Montreal Economic Institute. All of that is passed on to only two people, the person who builds the home and the person who buys the home. Let's be honest, the big developers don't pay any of it. They pass it all on. And if the cost gets too high to make it profitable, they go build somewhere else. But your members and young working class home buyers can't simply move to Florida or Singapore. They have to find a home in Barrie. And so they're the ones that are paying the full price. I am no longer going to give federal dollars to local bureaucracies to block home building. Rather, I'm going to reform the entire infrastructure transfer to municipalities to link the dollars they get to the homes that are allowed to be built. They will be required to free up land, speed up permit, 
and reduce development charges as a condition of getting federal funds will require they permit 15 percent more housing completions per year to get the funds. If they beat the target, they'll get a bonus. If they miss the target, they'll pay a fine. We'll sell off 6,000 federal buildings and thousands of acres of federal land to build, build, build. I'll require every federally funded transit station be pre-permitted for high-density housing all around and even on top before the municipality will get the money. They will have to bridge finance, and I will not send them the check until there, is a part, there, is, there are apartments around those transit stations so our youth and seniors can live next to bus, or, bus and trains. And we will back the trades the, because we need more boots, not more suits. My common sense plan will bring in a full write-off for the cost of food, transportation and accommodation so that your members can move from one job site to another. Today, a CEO can write off the cost of his private jet, but a pipe fitter who travels from Timmins to Fort Mac to do a job can only write up four grand, even if he has to do 20 flights a year. That is insane. And yesterday, we had the minister come before you and, and tell, ask you to thank him because he's going to consider looking at, studying the Conservative Private Members Bill to bring tax fairness for travelling trade workers. Enough consideration. That minister is, writing, is allowing CEOs the write-off. It's time to allow the workers the same write-off. And Common Sense Conservatives will adopt the bill from Chris Lewis, Conservative from Windsor, C241, to let our tradespeople write off those costs. This builds on other pro-worker... Yes, thank you. This bring, builds on other pro-worker policies that we have supported s since my leadership. A uh, conservative bill from Sarnia MP, uh, Marilyn Gladue, which puts pensions to the front of the line in the event of bankruptcy so that the bondholders and other financial speculators do not get paid before pensioners when a large employer goes bankrupt. The, the liquidated assets of the company go first and foremost to fully funding the pension of the workers and keeping the promise to them. I'm proud that that bill passed the House of Commons and the Senate and is now law so that pensions are safe. And I know that, the, that in this room you already have a lot of uh, your unions run great pension programs and I congratulate you for investing wisely in your, in your workers' future. We also voted uh, again, in favor of the anti-scab legislation in recognition that our working people have the right to bargain and fight for wage increases that they need in order to keep up with the galloping inflation that has ripped them off. We will also put an end to the abuse in the temporary foreign worker program. You know, yesterday, now I don't, I don't have to actually criticize the government for this because yesterday I'm told before you that Mr. Trudeau said the temporary foreign workers program was out of control. Jeez, if only he knew somebody who could do something about that. <laughs> if only he could find out who's been in charge for the last nine years, during which time the number of temporary foreign workers has tripled from 60,000 in 2015 to 188,000 last year, tripled. While we still have trades workers who can't find jobs, he brings in temporary foreign workers in order to allow employers to bid down wages and undercut Canadians. Uh, this is outrageous. When I was employment minister, we cut back on temporary foreign workers because we saw in the data exactly what the employer, what the big corporations were doing. They were abusing the program to drive down wages. In a free market, you have a natural tension between work and wages, where the employer has to bid up wages in order to attract the best workforce. But that free market doesn't exist if he can simply go outside of Canada and replace available Canadian workers with temporary foreign workers from lower wage countries who are willing to accept less money and, and, and much abuse. And that abuse has run rampant uh, under Justin Trudeau. And it's gotten to the, to the point where we're even using tax dollars to subsidize 
temporary foreign workers and other foreign workers coming to our country, taking jobs that Canadians could be doing. We see this with the Nexstar plant in Windsor, where the job descriptions for people say that they have to have uh, a fluency in Korean. And this is not just for highly specialized work related to the setup of the plant, it is for jobs that can, like forklift operator, that Canadians can and do. And this is at a time when your members are in Windsor, are out of work. My government policy will be very simple. There will be no tax dollars to subsidize foreign workers. Our tax dollars are for our workers in this country, period. But I also want to address the larger foreign worker problem that is invisible. And it is the fact that we are importing goods and services from countries that we could be producing here at home. So let's stay on the theme of electric cars. Canada produces little to no lithium. In 2022, we produced no lithium even though we have about the sixth biggest reserves on Earth. So, when you see people driving around in Teslas, feeling good about all they've done for the environment, the lithium in that battery was refined in China, probably mined in South America, rather than coming out of mines here in Canada. Even though we have the stuff right beneath our feet. Why? Because we have the second slowest building permits in the OECD. It takes 19 years to go from concept to shovel in the ground for a mine. 19 years. This does nothing for the environment. What do we learn about the environment in year 16, 17, and 18 of the study that we could not have learned in year one and two? That is the question. Well, what we're learning is that we're outsourcing our economic future and taking jobs away from tradespeople who could be mining these minerals. In northern Ontario, we have what should be the ring of fire, still not operational. I talked to the First Nations who want the project to get going. I said, is the shovel in the ground? They say the snow shovel is in the ground. Why? Because they've been waiting five years for a permit for a highway to get to the future mines. Five years for a highway permit. This is insane. We need to speed up our permitting. I will repeal the unconstitutional law, Bill C-69, and replace it with a law that will streamline approvals, protect the environment, consult First Nations, but get mines and other major resource projects approved in 18 months, not 18 years. We will build natural gas liquefaction plants, pipelines. We will, we will use responsibly our oil sands. We will approve nuclear facilities to power our grid with clean, green, Canadian nuclear power using Saskatchewan uranium, Ontario know-how, and your trades workers from right across this country because they are the best in the world. We're going to bring home our money to this country, turn dollars for dictators into paychecks for our people. And speaking of bringing home to our country want to bring home safety to our communities. Because after nine years of Justin Trudeau, we have crime, chaos, drugs, and disorder in our streets. Uh, we have shooting deaths that are up over 100% in just a decade. And of course, your members are the victims of these crimes. Uh, and uh, that is the result of the catch and release criminal justice system that Trudeau has given us so that the same 40 offenders had to be arrested 6,000 times in Vancouver. That's 150 arrests per offender per year. My common sense plan would make repeat offenders ineligible for bail, parole, or house arrest. It will be jail, not bail, jail, not bail. We will bring in treatment and recovery services rather than decriminalized and tax subsidizes, su subsidized hard drugs so that we can bring our loved ones home drug-free. And finally, we will respect your right to lawfully use your firearms. Uh, the Prime Minister believes that we need to ban hunting rifles. 
He wants to ban your hunting rifle. He wants to ban all civilian firearms ownership. Bill C-21 plus 300 pages of hunting rifles that he tried to amend uh, out of existence in that law. And with the support of the NDP, wants to take away the ability of Canadian trades workers to enjoy the outdoors and hunting on the weekends. My friends, I'm interested in protecting Canadians from criminals, not turkeys from hunters. So I will be repealing C-21. I will protect your right to hunt and sport shoot. And I will put the saved money into rebuilding border security and rebuilding the security at our ports to scan the shipping containers so that we can stop criminals from taking stolen cars out and bringing illegal drugs and guns in. That is how we will make our streets safe from illegal firearms. We're going to put you back in charge of your life. You know, uh, yesterday the Labour Minister talked about the pretender versus the real man. Funny, as he supports a guy who was literally an actor <laughs> as the Prime Minister, someone who pretended he would do great things for the middle class but has now deprived them of home ownership and food. Uh, and contrasts this against the real, the so-called real man. Well, if we want to idealize the real man or the real woman, it is not any politician. It is the people you represent, the people who literally build this nation with their hands, the common people. And I want to be your champion. I don't want to run your life. I don't want to decide on your behalf. I don't believe I have any special virtue or wisdom to, to, to lord over the population. I want a smaller government with bigger citizens, with free speech so you can decide what you see and say, with economic freedom so your members and the entrepreneurs who employ them keep more of what they earn, where we speed up and lower the cost of getting things done so that you can swing the hammers, turn the wrenches, and use your, the, the, the natural genius and earn skills to build a better life for yourselves and your families. I want to put you back in charge of your life here in Canada, the freest country on earth, built by the common sense of the common people, united for our common home. Your home, my home, our home. Let's bring it home. Thank you very much.